For Kruma Media's Politi, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is travel writer, novelist and photographer Justin Fox, here to unpack his book titled, Plays. Your book is a merging of literature and landscape, in which you explore the places from your favorite books and takes readers on a breathtaking journey into the heart of South Africa's particular landscape. So can you briefly tell us about your fascination behind traveling and writing? Yeah, I suppose it's a combination of, of two of my careers. I've been a travel journalist for many years working for Getaway magazine, probably more than 20 years off and on. And I've also been an academic doing a bit of teaching at Cape Town University in literature and travel writing. And so this book is a way of merging the two careers, the traveling and the journey and being on the open road as a journalist and a slightly more academic way of looking at literature and landscape. And so it's a marriage of those two. And Justin, the work you have chosen to depict are of South African landscapes that have remained wild and largely unspoiled rather than bold environments. So can you tell us more about the reasoning for that and about some of the research needed for a book like this? Yeah, I'm, I'm particularly attracted to wild places and place, places of nature. I'm not particularly attracted to concrete jungles like Johannesburg and Cape Town where I live. And so I get switched on when I'm in beautiful, wild, uh, unspoilt environments. Mm -hmm. And same with all my authors. All of these authors, whether it's J.M. Kutsia, Olive Schreiner, Dalian Matia, Herman Charles Bosman, they all were writing about particularly rural or wild environments. Uh, and so I picked authors that would appeal to me and were writing about about wild in my environments. I could have done an urban uh, an urban book and done Ivan Vladislavich's Johannesburg or something like that, and that could be a different project. But this was about the South African wild and beautiful places. And talking about Oliver Schreiner, why did your visit to the Moonstruck Eastern Karoo leave an impression on you? Yeah, I, I think of the story of an African farm as being the great first South African novel and, and Olive Schreiner as the mother of South African literature in a way, certainly English literature. And so that was a sort of a pilgrimage for me to go to the home where it all started and the, and the remains of the farm of a story of an, the story of an African farm and her grave, which is very close to that spot, was almost for me as a as a literature scholar was like a spiritual pilgrimage journey. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about your journey to research Zig's Mda's heart of redness in Colora in the Eastern Cape, and what was your interest in that book? Yeah, I taught at UCT with Zakes many years ago, and I love his writing. And also as a child, my parents used to take me to the old wild coast, the Coffee Bay, Port St. John's, Kai River Mouth. And so this was a chance to marry a beautiful book, The Heart of Redness, one of Zakes and Dar's best pieces of writing, with my own, own love of that landscape. And he grew up in the Eastern Cape, and he has a particular affinity for those little Eastern Cape villages, and he spent a lot of time on that wild coast. And I wanted to go and spend time exploring his landscape and my own childhood memories of, of going there on, on holiday as a kid. What were you trying to achieve with this book? Is it perhaps to tap into the ideas of belonging? Yeah, um, I, did, I did look at the idea of patriotism and I'm particularly interested in South Africans' love of landscape. They say, oh, but your land is beautiful. And when foreign visitors always come here, they say, oh, you have the most beautiful country in the world but we have a deeply divided, deeply troubled country going through a terrible political period. And so that casts a dark shadow. And I wanted to explore both the idea of the beauty and the love of the land, which most South Africans have, a kind of a patriotism about the land, but then also, as a shadow, the troubled times we're going through. And both of those, both of those aspects of the South African landscape are explored in this book. And I don't come to... An necessarily a resolution but I try and work through some of those ideas during the course of these journeys. And as South Africa pushes on through its many struggles Justin, immigration is on the lips of some who have had enough. In taking a journey for this book do you believe the country has more to offer than what we currently see? I think it's a mixed bag and that's a difficult question and I did set up the idea of immigration right in the first chapter as a possible for many South Africans, particularly these authors I deal with. One of the authors I deal with, J.M. Kutsia, decided to emigrate to Australia 
another author uh, I deal with, Stephen Watson, spoke to me before he died many times about the idea of emigration. And in the end, he felt he could not leave this country. He had such a, a passionate love of the landscape, particularly the Western Cape, Cedarburg landscape, that he admitted that the love was so strong that he could never leave. So the idea of immigration, um, it, it goes on in my own head. I spend a lot of time overseas doing my research, but I always come back. So I'm in this kind of push me, pull you backward and forward idea, and I do explore it in the book because I think a lot of South Africans are running that through their minds about um, if we stay and if we are able to stay, why do we stay and what what is it about this land that is so intoxicating and so infuriating as well. And lastly, Justin, what are you hoping people take away after reading your book? Two things, I think. Um, I think go out and explore South Africa. Take take these books. I think taking great pieces of literature and using them as your guidebook to go to the Kruger Park with Jock of the Bushveld in your in your hands, or to go to the Marika uh, and the Kalahari fringes with Herman Charles Bosman book in your hand. So go and explore those landscapes, and read these books. These South African classics are a wonderful celebration of our land, and they're a perfect way. It's a perfect way to travel, to have, instead of a map with you, to have a great piece of literature. That was Justin Fox speaking to Criminal Media's Polity about plays.